Dr. Fraser Crane, the longest running and arguably most beloved character in the history of sitcom television, has returned for a new series on Paramount Plus. This modern revival was something that I had initially planned on staying far, far away from, given both the current state of modern revivals and reboots, and that the original series is among my all time favorites. Frasier masterfully blended comedy, which ranged from subtle, understated quips and play on words to over-the-top hijinks and slapstick physical performances, and drama that beautifully highlighted the realities of heartbreak and the complexities of the familial dynamic, all of which was acted out perfectly by its outstanding ensemble cast. David Hyde Pierce's Niles Crane embodied the classic younger sibling who, despite his cheeky demeanor, you couldn't help but root for and sympathize with. I actually looked up at the house and said, Goodbye, Maris. I hope you have a happy life. The late John Mahoney's Martin Crane was perhaps one of the most authentic portrayals of a good father in sitcom television, not always stopping to give a sermon on right and wrong, and more often just wanting to be left alone in his chair, but still acted as a loving moral guide for his sons. Ask yourself, what do I really want? What is really going to make me happy? Of course, Fraser himself could be played by none other than Kelsey Grammer. Blending the intellect and air of sophistication Fraser strives to maintain with the near manic exasperation at the difficulties of life that are doubtless felt by anyone watching the show. This isn't about the table anymore. It's about the erosion of common decency. Perhaps what you need is an elegant lesson. <laughs> It's a series that can be enjoyed at multiple levels, and in short, it's as close to perfect as a sitcom can get. So given the character's lofty place in sitcom history, and again, that state of modern Hollywood revivals, how does the new Frasier stack up? Well, Seattle, prepare to have your expectations subverted. Episode 1 opens on Dr. Frasier Crane disembarking from a flight from Boston, accompanied by his nephew, Niles and Daphne's son, David. He stopped by to meet with an old colleague and new character to the show, Alan Cornwall, and give a lecture to his class before leaving. While there, he goes to visit his son, Frederick, who acts dismissive and seems to want nothing to do with him. He briefly introduces his girlfriend before doing just about everything he can but throwing him out the door. Fraser's hurt, feeling a massive disconnect with his son, both in light of his recent actions as well as Frederick's absence from his grandfather Martin's funeral. After Fraser leaves, we learn Frederick is hiding something. Not only is Eve not his girlfriend, but there is someone named John that he doesn't want his father to know about. Fraser decides to make a dinner for his son in hopes of reconnecting, during which the rest of the cast show up, each with their own agenda. David is eager to please and wants to help out Fraser. Alan's boss, Olivia, is determined to get Fraser to stay in Boston permanently and accept a teaching position. Eve wants to help out Frederick in concealing his secret, and Alan just wants a drink. Between the combined antics of everyone there, the secret eventually comes out, and John is in fact a baby, the son of Eve and Frederick's best friend who had died in a fire. Frederick had difficulty coping with the loss, and the only person who had been able to get through to him was his grandfather, Martin. Frazier and his son reconcile, prompting Frazier to accept the job offer and move into the apartment building, hoping to connect further with his son in the same way that he'd once done with his own father. Now, if, like myself, you've watched any modern series, especially involving an updated new take on a classic character, you might have thought you knew the direction that this show was heading in. But this is where Paramount Plus is Frazier actually subverted my expectations. From Freddy's introduction, the show seemed to be setting up, and fairly heavy-handedly so, the all-too-played-out acceptance of one true self sort of trope, and was preparing the audience for a lecture. However, it flipped the script, bringing a genuinely surprising reveal, and chose to portray its characters in a much more nuanced and true-to-life way, as flawed but genuinely good people who've been hit hard by life, but carry on despite their struggles. It was a brilliant move by the writers, subverting the audience expectations of change and modernity and oversimplified lessons punctuated by modern activism 
and instead gave something more sophisticated and true to life that doesn't outline any sort of moral superiority. Freddy doesn't belittle Frasier or demand anything of him, and nor does Frasier scold him for his actions, but both come to a better understanding of the other during the complicated scenarios of life, and it gives a very poignant moment for father and son to reconcile. Aside from this, the show, like its predecessor, walks the fine line of humor and drama, with the new cast of characters doing an excellent job filling in as the spiritual successors of the original cast, bringing charm and humor to their roles, all acting as unique foils to the bombastic Dr. Fraser Crane, who, again, can only be played by Kelsey Grammer. Overall, Paramount Plus's Fraser is off to a great start, and if it continues on this trajectory, it'll keep me tuning in throughout the season. From its opening title to Grammer's ending jazzy melody about tossed salads and scrambled eggs. Looking for a show that will absolutely meet your expectations? Use the force and click here. This is Dr. Fraser Crane. I'm listening.